Peter Maguire now joins in uh, to talk to us about what to make of crude. Peter, um, there's no clear direction emerging just yet. Uh, crude has given up 8% in the last six days uh, for one reason or the other. Uh, as we wake up this morning, of course, it's trying to find a base uh, from its three-month low as more Norwegian oil workers uh, go on strike. So, of course, supply constraints are still not out of the way completely. But is this a buying opportunity, you think, if you're a crude trader? Well, good morning, Samina. What a great question. I mean, you know, fundamentally, you'd have to say that, you know, with that 8% washout, it was probably overboard and there's a fair bit of profit-taking. Uh, I think there's possibly a little bit further downside. The Norwegian situation certainly creates a little bit of uncertainty. But I think you've also got to put your mind across what the Saudis are after, and we're only a month after that meeting in OPEC uh, this time last month. But, you know, when you think about Mother Nature, and I always refer to it this time of year, put our minds back to 2005 and that shocking hurricane season through the Gulf of Mexico. And always the end of July, start of August is when the season starts. And I think it could be a quite a volatile hurricane season. So I've got to say that I think that crude will probably edge up higher than this. Right. Uh, Peter, actually, that's a very interesting point again. Uh, so basically what you're saying is the start of a hurricane season, perhaps uh, some sort of uh, pointers uh, uh, could actually coming from there. Uh, but having said that, uh, what's your view on uh, the narrowing of the spreads between WTI and Brent? Uh, what this could be implying? What is changing uh, now between the last six months? Because uh, Brent basically has fallen more versus WTI. Uh, how sustainable are this looking like? Well, that's exactly, Piyush. I mean, you know, the narrowing of that spread it really widened there a couple of months back, and I think that really took a lot of traders uh, by surprise. Uh, we've seen that uh, that narrowing, and also there is no doubt that when you're looking at the WTI, um, that over, I think, production or, or, the, or the simple rationing of, of what's going on from the shale side has been very, very supportive of it. Um, traders at the present time, there's, you know, the hedge funds and, uh, and of course, the speculators are really, I think, probably looking and ramping those, um, you know, the short side to the Brent market more than WTI. And that's really, you know, narrowed it down from that side as well. So uh, there were trading opportunities. People find, and when I say people, traders look for opportunities. They look for uh, markets that, uh, you know, are overpriced and they probably felt in some fashion or form that Brent was more overpriced than what that should be and that's where they've been able to narrow it down. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Peter, another question perhaps uh, would be, as you're just pointing out about crude here, I also want to ask you, while oil has its own dynamics, um, and again, there are different moving parts here, broadly on commodities, uh, the bias is absolutely sell here. So, take a look at base metals. Across the base metals, we are seeing selling. Uh, in fact, the, the top base metals, who, who actually were the market's favorite last year, they actually are the top sell at present this year. Uh, gold, silver, again, they actually are seeing strong selling bias. Uh, gold ETFs, that's the longest stretch, almost five to six months, continuous outflows have been there. Uh, and crude, again, we have seen mild selling. So what are you making out of the entire commodity trend? And uh, how much sort of outflows uh, do you see over the next two, three months? How, how long we can see this sort of selling trend? Well, the, I think one of the first parts of it has got to be where the US dollar has traded and what's happened over the, you know, this, this last quarter. Uh, from the US dollar index and against, you know, the, all those other currency pairs. So there's the first part. The, the uncertainty as far as the global situation, what's happening as far as President Trump and tariffs, and is the Fed going to take a, a, a positive mood um, with another rate rise? So there's the first part. The second part is um, gold, no doubt. It was probably, um, you know, just smacked to the downside. There was no sense of support there from that 1260, 1250 sort of number, and now it's, you know, I think we're at um, one year lows or close to it. Um, and then, as far as the base metals, they were probably, in, if you're looking at it from a, a chart perspective, they were overbought. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, movement to uh, as far as profit taking and people being able to trade them and short them. So, you know, it's 
that's what traders look for, and they that's the beauty of futures markets and, and options markets, and of course, um, you know, from opportunity. So uh, that doesn't surprise me. I think it's going to be a fascinating next three months. Um, moving into August, September, October, what goes on with the Fed and, of course, where that US dollar trend. So I think that's the one to really consider, Pius. Um, no more than that. Have a close eye on the US dollar and uh, see what happens as far as President Trump because there's always uncertainty there. Right. Uh, very lastly, Peter, what's the word on the dollar rupee pair? Of course, uh, we back home are cheering the fact that crude is looking slightly weaker, even if it's only temporary in nature. Should be supporting the dollar rupee pair as well. But we have our own macro problems to deal with, uh, with your WPI, IAP slowing down, inflation a concern. Uh, we've hit levels of our 69 twice in the past. Uh, do you think it's only a matter of time that the rupee makes peace with trading above levels of 69 against the dollar? I think so, Samina. I feel as though that there's, you know, that that sort of number has um, got more momentum. Uh, there's, there's again, where buyers see opportunity. They'll look at, you know, sh um, uh, short-term trading. They'll look at a macro view. They'll take into consideration, you know, the domestic economy in India and as far as um, uh, inflation and, of course, interest rates and what you guys are doing. And then they'll look at where the Fed raises or, or what the situation there is. And I think that's the, that's the true essence of, you know, the currency pair at the present. There's plenty of opportunity and you may see a further, um, you know, push to that upside there. So who's to say that you won't see a 7-0 handle? Um, I'm not suggesting it might happen in the next you know, month or two, but um, it's going to be fascinating what plays out over the next quarter. I think it's going to be a very interesting time for all currency trading um, in the next, uh, you know, eight to 14 weeks.